Hi, I'm Mary Montner. I'm the co-founder and COO of GangWithSister.com. I'm here today with Toby Klein-Greenwald, and I'll let her introduce herself. I'm the co-founder and editor-in-chief of WholeFamily.com, a family relationship website that addresses parents, grandparents, and teens. I'd like you, if you can, to tell me something about yourself that changed as part of the process of becoming an entrepreneur. I had to develop a level of courage to go up to some of the most famous the wealthiest people and give them the elevator pitch about our company in order to raise money. And we were a very tiny fledgling company. I would go to conferences, to dinners, just make cold calls. Once I told the vice president of an international telecommunications company, we're going to put you on the global map. And my business partner who was standing across from me when I made that phone call had his jaw dropped open, like, where did I get that nerve? But we did get a meeting with him, and we did get a sponsorship with him, and his sponsorship actually was what enabled us to raise several million dollars. And the fact that we had the sponsorship of that company encouraged investors to put in several million dollars. What was the most inappropriate thing that anyone ever said to you? I was in a meeting once with our executive team. There were three men and myself, and we were sitting across from another executive team that was all men who we were considering doing a partnership with. And um, at one point, I wanted to take the other side of the table metaphorically, and I said, I'm going to play devil's advocate for a moment. And one of the executives on the other side looked up and said, hmm, and a very pretty devil she is too. <laughs> Needless to say, not only my jaw dropped, but the men with me totally went into shock since uh, they had never totally went into shock. And immediately the man who had said it apologized profusely, realized how inappropriate it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think that sometimes, you know, I can tell the story of I went into a, a meeting once and there were, if I'm not mistaken, there were 14 yeah, there were 14 men around the table, and they sat me at the head of the other side, like it was them against me. Um, and they said, so, little girl, what do you think you can do for our business? <laughs> and I I looked at them, I, I, I didn't know what to do with myself. First, I wasn't a little girl. I was already, I think, almost 30. Second, I was already the vice president of a company. They had called me in to ask me to provide a service, but so, little girl, I mean... So, would you rather be called a little girl or a pretty devil? devil. Yes. Right. Um, so sometimes we get those comments, and I think, you know, I just launched into, this is what I think that I can do for you. And at the end I said, and please don't ever call me little girl anymore. And the funny part of that story is that, of course, I got the contract and I worked with them for years. But, you know, they had to be put in their place. Yep. Can you tell about a time um, at work where you had a really strong emotion, be it anger, embarrassment, joy? I think one of the most exciting moments was when our site was chosen as finalists in the children's category and semi-finalists in the education category at the GII Awards in 1998, which at that time were the Academy Awards of the Internet. Here we were, a very tiny startup, and we were there with the other winners and finalists that included Yahoo, Charles Schwab, and there was our little company in big beautiful ballroom in Chicago and what it proved to me was that part of the magic of the internet is that you don't have to be known in the beginning in order to become a success. That if the content that you're offering is valuable and real and important to people, it doesn't matter how small you are when you begin. Just go forward. Yes, we generally ask everyone if they have a special talent that they'd like us to include on our film. So Toby's talent is apparently belly dancing. I belly dance, but I'm not going to <laughs> share it on film too. Okay. If I were to give you one hour today, no transportation required, meaning within that hour you could be in Barbados or in Antarctica or wherever you wanted to be. Okay, there's no travel time. If I could give you one hour today, what would you do with it? I would want to be on a mountaintop writing poetry. 
Um, so the last question that I have today is if there's anything um, that you'd like to share with our, our vlog audience um, about Gang the Sister. First of all, if you do have any fears or any hesitancies about technology, get over it. It's just going to get better and better. I was an avid reader of science fiction when I was a kid and also later, and I was, of course, a Trekkie. And I think that the idea of vision, anything that you really want to make happen and you think it could be done, and even if you don't think it could be done, if you believe, if you believe, I can do this. Have no fear. Just go forward. Do it. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid that it won't be perfect. Life isn't always perfect. Just forge ahead. Don't be afraid to dream. Don't listen to people who tell you your dreams aren't realistic. What's realistic today? There is nothing that is not realistic. If it's not realistic today, it'll be realistic five years from now, 10 years from now, 50 years from now, or maybe tomorrow. Just go.